is how you can make a bread mold out of parchment paper. Now, this comes out to be an octagon, um, and it's great for panettone and other breads that you want to have in a circle pan. But you maybe you don't want to go out and buy the, um, the ready-made ones. And I think these are actually more interesting looking. They kind of have an arts and craft period sort of look to them and utilizes uh, some techniques in origami. So I will fast forward through some parts that are very repetitive, um, but this is not too hard to do. And if you use uh, parchment paper that has a grid already on it, that can sometimes be a little helpful uh, in the beginning. You will need something to fasten the corners. In traditional origami, they would not use that, but we're making bread molds, and I found that the bread expands too aggressively, so you need some sort of a clip in the middle. And there are some options. Um, you could sew uh, parts together. You can use a toothpick like I did or a stapler. And I'll show you how that can be done. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to need to get is a square piece of uh, parchment paper. So this is 15 inches long. So we're going to have a 15 inch square. This will hold approximately 600 grams of dough or about 21 ounces, uh, give or take. Um, but it also depends on how much your uh, dough expands. So a general large will hold about 800 grams. Um, so this will be a slightly smaller um, than that. So we have our um, forward edge that comes out of the box. Some people may want to cut this. If you generally rip your paper out of the box, then this will no longer be straight. So if you have a grid, cut along the grid so you have a straight edge. Uh, and if you don't, just take the paper, fold it in half so that the um, bottom edge of one piece fits to the bottom edge of another. Press that down, and that will give you a line that's going to be perfectly straight. But I've got a new piece out of the box, so that's fairly straight. Now, I need to pay attention to this corner and this edge. So I need to make a square, so I'm going to take my cut edge and make it go along the bottom edge. And the first thing I want to do is watch that corner. So I'm going to press here when the corner is perfect. And then I can slide this paper up and down uh, until it matches. So that's a pretty good match. Now I'm going to hold that down. I've got the corner held and I've got the paper held. And now I can just kind of flatten it out. If my hand is flat, the paper won't slide and I'll be able to keep that edge. The next thing to do is I want to cut along this edge here, uh, and that will give me my perfect square. And now we've got our basic triangle. So we're going to take this and fold it in half from one corner to the other. And you might want to press in the corner. The paper is kind of brittle. So sometimes it doesn't take folds like regular paper does. And I'm going to go ahead and fold that down flat. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you get a better look at my hands as I do the rest of the work. All right, so now that we have our uh, piece of paper, um, you've got an open end and you've got a closed tip. So we're going to think of these pieces as shark's fins. And we're going to do this a lot for this particular um, you know, paper mold. So one side will be open, the other side's closed. I'm just going to put my hand in there, kind of point to the corner, and I want to make sure these corners stay together down here. So I just go ahead and put my finger in, flatten down, and then bring this corner all the way down to those corners. Go ahead and press that flat. And I'm going to turn that over. I'm going to do the same thing. Now, when we do these shark's fins, um, it's going to be helpful to kind of fold back and forth before you actually open it up. So I'm going to take just the shark's fin. I'm not going to let any of the other papers unravel. I'm going to fold that down. Press. So we've got that. And now we have a shark's fin that kind of comes up and down. So again, find the open end. Make sure these stay closed. Open up. Press to the corner. And then I lay this down flat. All 
All right, my corners are not perfect here, but it's gonna work for what we need to do. Most of this is gonna be hidden. So now we have two pages on one side, two pages on the other. We have an open end. I'm gonna keep the open end to the right-hand side and the closed end to the left-hand side, just so things stay organized. All right, so we're gonna take up one page, not both, just one page, lift it up, and we're gonna do that shark's fin again. So I'm gonna fold that page over, and these creases will actually help us out later on. I'm gonna take my finger and again, open up that shark's fin and kind of point towards the corner. That'll help open it up. We lay it flat, and we wanna make sure that this center line goes along these lines that we see here. And fold it flat. I'm gonna turn that over and do the same thing. I'm gonna lift this up like a shark's fin, fold it over, lift it up, and again, I find the opening. I wanna keep these corners together and point to that forward piece. And we're gonna lay it down. This is called a squash fold. And again, the center line goes to uh, this center mark here. Then I press it down. So we're gonna do that on the two other parts that are sticking out. So what we're gonna do is fold it over like a page. That keeps everything kind of organized. And now I do my shark's fin here. Lift it up. Then we're gonna open up the edge of the shark's fin and lay it down flat again. Flip it over, do the same. Move the page over. Make the shark's fin go back and forth. Open this up. And we lay it down flat. Okay. Now we've got all of our corners down. Something you need to pay attention to is this split. Okay, if you see the split, then you'll know the next step is gonna be wrong. So we're just gonna flip over one page. And now when we lift this up, there's no split there anymore. So we've got one solid kite shaped uh, piece. So we're going to turn this and I want to bring this corner to the top and I want to pinch somewhere in the middle wherever that is. So we're trying to find the middle spot. So I'm going to bring that up and I just want to touch here and press kind of hard so I leave a mark. I don't want to press all the way across because that'll kind of wrinkle up the paper where I don't need it. Open that up and now we have a mark and that's where the tip goes to and we do make a formal fold there. So we're going to bring this up Bring it up to that mark, and then now I do press it down fairly hard. I'm going to flip it over and do the same. Because we want to make a hinge here. This is actually the bottom of your bread mold. All right. So I'm going to go back into this position. The open is on the right, the closed is on the left. And oh, look at that. We've got a split here. So I know this is the wrong place to be. So I'm just going to take one page and flip it over. Now we're good. You can see that that's a solid page now. So we're going to take this, fold it back up, and you can see it's going to match our little mark. Now the next point, um, you're going to follow the edge along here with this outer page, and we're just doing one page. So I'm going to take that page, follow the edge, and I'm going to bring this across. Now if I folded this perfectly and if my square was perfect, this edge would kind of line up with a little edge that's hiding underneath there. But it wasn't exactly perfect. So what I'm really paying attention to is that we got this center line here, and I want it to be a parallel line to this one. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's a bread mold. So it's a little off, it doesn't really matter. But I'm trying to make it kind of parallel. So to me, that looks parallel. And we also want to make sure that this tip passes that halfway mark. If it doesn't, your bread mold will pop open. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the top piece. I'm going to fold this over, again one page, and I'm trying to match this edge. So that's my aiming point first. 
And then I want to take a look at that parallel thing. So you can see this is kind of like in too far. That looks about parallel to me. So I can press that down. Now I open this end. And this top piece, that single flap, we're going to fold that over so it matches from here to here. But it's only one piece I'm grabbing. So I fold that over. And you can see this is that decorative little piece that comes over where we put our uh, fastener through. So now I'm going to go ahead and just flip it over and do the same thing again. So I'll move the tip up, fold this outer edge, just one leaf, going across, kind of matching the triangle. I want to make sure that my line, this outer edge, is parallel to the center edge. It's pretty close. Take this single page, fold that over, and again, kind of looking for parallel, best you can. Press that down, and I bring this leaf, single leaf, back over. Okay, now I'm going to flip one page. And now you're going to start to see the other edges popping out, so this goes faster. Again, fold that over this over and now I don't really have to worry so much about the edge I can just kind of match what's already there pull this one over again match what's underneath lift that over bring over the tip and we turn it over I need to flip one page And again, flip the bottom up, match the edge, pull this over, match the edge, and then down, and our last fold over. Now you may be tempted to try and open this up right away, and that would be a big mistake. We need to fasten these tabs down. If this was just regular origami, we would take this tab and we would tuck it underneath here and that would be kind of the end of the origami octagon box. However, this is, has to hold bread. So we need to make sure that it's you know fastened more securely. So that means if in the origami world we're going to cheat. The key for this is that we need to have something go through these two points here at the top edge. It's got to be pretty close because there's some hidden stuff underneath here. We want to catch all of these layers of paper. So by making sure you're close to the top edge, and I would say going about a centimeter, slightly less than a centimeter out, maybe a third of an inch or a quarter of an inch out from the center line, then you have um, a good place to work. Now if you have a stapler, I know that there are some samples out there, not of this particular one, where people just grab the edge and put a staple through it. The staples are held together with some kind of industrial glue. I don't want food touching industrial glue. So a trick that you can do is if you have a stapler that has a very small bottom lip, and sometimes craft staplers have this, office staplers do not. Um, I have a special like handheld one, but there are other kinds that are just kind of small. What you can do is slide the stapler underneath these folds. You want to make sure everything stays kind of tight and then you could staple through this way close to the edge and then your paper won't pull apart. So that's the quick and easy way to sort of do it. I like to go more of a decorative route so I could either sew this together um, or I can use my uh, toothpicks like I did in my other example. So to do either one you need to pre-make a hole. So if you have a awl you can use, A-W-L, um, I'm just going to use my instant read thermometer because it's got a sharp point on it. So I want to make sure I'm only grabbing one layer. Put a little bit of wrapped up fabric. You could also use an eraser, a block eraser, a little rubber pad. And I'm going to go ahead and go through and make sure that I'm not stabbing myself. So stay safe.
And then I can take a toothpick and go in one hole and out the other. And I kind of like that crafty sort of look. But again, I could have sewn through the two holes and just kind of tied it together. If you are going to use um, string to tie it, make sure it's 100% cotton. Um, it's the same string that they use to wrap up beef if you're going to do like an eye roast or something like that. Um, that kind of fabric will be fine. That can handle the temperatures. You don't want to use yarn or rayon or something that's kind of plastic based. That will poison your food. Um, so stay with that. So let me do my other corners real quick. All right, now I've got all my um, tabs tied down and we have to open it up. So just use your hand and kind of open up inside. And these little edges are going to be the bottom corner edges. And then once you have it mostly open, you can press it against a tabletop or counter and just put your fingers into the corners and that will help uh, open it up. Now, parchment paper releases very well from bread. Um, you could take a little spray and put it inside there, but I think you're going to be fine without it. And you can see these have a really nice decorative quality. If you wanted to get more decorative, perhaps you can find a printed parchment paper, but definitely don't do it with your own materials because um, you know, if you use Sharpie markers, you're adding formaldehyde. If you're using other things, you want to just be careful of that. Make sure it comes from the factory as, you know, food safe. You could also use a scissor and maybe play with this scalloped edge sort of thing if you have special decorative scissors. Um, but overall, I think this as a piece of presentation, you know, the way to kind of send a loaf is going to be really pretty and um, appreciated. So uh, if you've enjoyed this, please go ahead and like and subscribe and check out my other videos.